Ryan, uh, you called me. What's up today? You want to do some kind of efficiency comparison? Yeah, I was really hoping we could uh, check out a little bit of a comparison between my Tesla right here and then your vehicle. Right. I don't think it's very fair. I mean, your Tesla, you know, it's a great car, but it's only got one motor. Mine has double the motors. It's like 600 pounds heavier. I just don't think that's very one-to-one. -one. Uh, unless, did you mean something different? Yeah, no, I had something else in mind. Some uh, other dual motors right there. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What's in my trunk? Oh, okay. You know, I think I might have this. Hey everyone, so what we're doing today, uh, Ryan's not going to be this clip because I'm basically done my ride, but I'm going to, in the rest of the video, show you Ryan and I's journey in this Model 3 on a 24 mile round trip that we decided compared to my bike. And in all seriousness, this is a ridiculous comparison because you might think, Look, what the heck is the point of that? Of course, the bike is going to be more efficient than a car, even an electric one. Yes, however, a lot of people don't seem to understand that electric cars, uh, regardless of, you know, how much more efficient they may be than their gas counterparts are still inefficient. And I'm making this video sort of as a PSA, not really to be preachy and say, oh, you should bike everywhere, but just to say, hey, it's kind of amazing how efficient um, mobile forms of transport are for, you know, single occupants. Uh, so not necessarily even a bike like this. I mean, this is my road bike. I'm gonna be wearing Liker in this video. This was me doing a big ride. I'm an amateur athlete. I'm not expecting everyone to do that. What I do want to look at though is a super efficient car like the Tesla Model 3. We've got to give it to it. Um, incredibly efficient. Ryan's Model 3, I think is like what? It's a 60 kilowatt hour battery, tons of capacity, LFP. Uh, 200 kilowatt rear motor. Uh, my motors here are looking at like 700 watts peak on a good day, um, really. So, and I'm consistently holding not much more than 200 watts. Um, so cars are obviously gonna be way faster than me, way more powerful than me. Ryan and I will probably average a higher speed in his car. However, the difference I wanna show here is the absolute energy consumed uh, between my bike and his, um, his car. The way we're gonna show this is basically on the car, it's very easy. There's a trip odometer with Tesla or with any car. Uh, and it'll show us the watt hours we've consumed, watt hours a mile, the mile distance. We can do the math ourselves. The car will even say kilowatt hours consumed, but we wanna have the most precise metric. So we'll have watt hours, which should be somewhere in the thousands um, for his Tesla. For my bike, I am gonna be recording this route as everyone should on Strava. And with Strava, it's very easy to, um, get an average power reading. Now, if you're a bike nerd like me, you'll know that there's way more accurate ways to get power off a bike because a bike drivetrain, here I get to get bike nerdy for a second. Um, well, you can measure power from the crank, from the pedals. That's a lot of hundreds of dollars of equipment that I don't have. I wish I did. Kyle won't pay for it. We don't have sponsors yet. So if someone wants to change that, go and send us some. But for now, this is gonna be a not super scientific comparison. That said, it's still gonna be relatively useful because we're not talking a margin of error of, um, you know, uh, a ton here. And uh, frankly, I think the difference in efficiency between these two is going to be an order of magnitude. It's going to be me, right? Riding the bike as one person, 17 pound bike, 150 pound person, um, compared to a uh, almost 4,000 pound gross curb weight vehicle rolling down the road with Ryan and I in it. Huge difference, I'm sure. Unfair, but I think it's going to show you make you appreciate maybe how big electric car batteries are, uh, how impressive they are. And also that for trips, if you live somewhere with a bike infrastructure to support it, it might be nice to bike. Uh, and I think, I hope on this channel or maybe out of spec scoots, we can cover more like electric bikes because that could be a fit super fascinating too. Uh, for, you know, realistically, most people aren't going to be doing their commute in a bike like this. They're going to be doing it in like a Polestar 2 or a Tesla Model 3 or some such electric vehicle. Um, but, um, right, we're just comparing most efficient to most efficient. Electric bikes might have their own virtue, you know, because of the motor. And let's be honest, if we want to go down the whole chain, get environmental about it, um, digesting, depending on where you get your food from, those are all environmental impacts because, of course, you are the fuel powering something like this vehicle. Um, whereas an electric bike, it's you plus a motor and maybe the motor can actually make up for some inefficiencies. So if an e-bike company wants to reach out to us, that'd be super cool. But anyhow, this is not your normal out of spec guide content. It's a bit of a sillier video. Nonetheless, I do think it's cool as a comparison and I hope it teaches you something. So um, stay tuned and uh, watch us do a trip or watch me do a trip on this and then Ryan and I do a trip in his Tesla.
Okay, just finished the ride. Looks like an even 24 miles. So I'm gonna take off the bike shoes and uh, we'll do the ride in Tesla's, I'm sorry, Ryan's Tesla Model 3. Compare that efficiency, make sure he's taking all the same turns. I'll be in the car with him. So we should go the exact same distance, obviously higher speed, I'm sure higher drag. However, the car is more aerodynamic. And the point of this is not to be fair, but just to compare that when it's unfair, and it's one person on a bike, you can be able to think a lot more efficient than a car, even one as efficient as a Model 3. So let's see if that's the case. But first, I got to take off the shoes because, man, I mean, they're not exactly driving shoes out of there. They're quite tight. So I'll be back. Okay, Ryan, um, pardon if we have AC noise. We're just, you know, filming this casually and quick today, but um, we're going to reset the odometer, right? Exactly. Yeah, just the trip. Uh, so we're going to go over here in the car settings, go to trips, uh, trip A, and uh, A5. That's the one that we want. <laughs> I do love the Tesla. Let's see. And then we can reset trip A5. Nice. Shall we do it? Let's do it. All right, let's get started. It's so cool. The Tesla gives you multiple trip. Like I have a trip auto and the trip manual and that's it in my car. Yeah, it's it's really nice having multiple trips plus the uh, lifetime. Yeah, cars are computers. So why don't we just let them store more stuff? I don't understand it. Anyhow. We're just cruising along, going the speed limit. How are things going? Uh, you know, we just climbed what you mentioned as one of the harder hills. Um, I had to use the accelerator a little bit. Yeah, I can't say it was that easy for me. Um, that hill, you know, was a little bit, a little bit more effort for me. And that's one of the funny things about it is like, I feel like cars, because of you're moving at a faster speed, you normalize all the effort a little bit more. Not to say hills don't take more energy for a car, but in a bike, man, I mean, you're gonna feel an e-bike or no, it's a steep enough hill, you know, you're gonna put in a little more work. Definitely. Yeah, so the sweat tax is real. And speaking of sweat tax, what the hell is Colorado weather? It's like dripping a little bit. We're doing our best for conditions. Uh, just keep left on this road. Um, but yeah, you know, still a sunny day. It's, it's very surreal. It's the flat irons right there looking pretty. I, I like what you just said, Ryan. This is the most Boulder video yeah, we've ever made. Yeah, we're just making an ad for Boulder. Yeah. I mean, if you saw the earlier video about my home charging installation, you saw the cost for that. Maybe that'll provide some nuance for you if they're gonna move in here. But uh, nonetheless, super pretty. Couldn't ask for better weather. We did escape that ominous weird rain cloud that was sort of following us and conditions still seem to be the same. I'm hearing very little wind noise, which either is a testament to the MPH of the Model 3, or I'm guessing more likely, there's just not that much wind. Not a ton of wind. This is not necessarily the quietest vehicle I've ever been in, but it's decently quiet. It's decently quiet. I mean, I think, I don't know, it's always hard when we talk about Tesla build quality, because it's like, it's better. Is it still great? I don't know. I mean, it, it seems pretty good for a car of this class. And hey, in an electric car, you're going to hear everything just because you have so much, you know, less noise from not having an engine. Uh, but I will say, when I was on the bike, I heard a lot more. So there's that. But sense. good hack, you can wear AirPods and uh, noise canceling. So that is a, a solution. Can't say it's here too. You could do that here. Uh, <laughs> I, I think Kyle has done that in his like a Range Rover, one of his cars that has a terrible noise inside. He actually does that. Uh, but anyhow, um, yeah, beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for better. And what are we doing? Are we regening a little bit? Yep. A tiny bit of regen down this hill. 
nice and then we're just rolling up easy so the way to drive efficiently seems to be ghost a little bit going down maybe take some regen if you need to slow down and going uphill just take it easy i mean don't you know be a hazard on the road but uh feel free to go the speed limit uh or safely under if you can and if you want to get the most possible range exactly yeah trying to coast as much as possible it's just keep it steady yeah try to keep that bar as small as possible Yep, in a Tesla or in many cars, basically just minimize your energy input or your, sorry, your energy output. Uh, I can say, I never drive like this, but I'm glad we're driving like this today because we're trying to make this as fair of a comparison as possible. Definitely. Okay, so we're just pulling into my driveway. We just basically ended the loop. This is exactly where I did so on my bike. So how do I do that, Ryan? Go into trips. trips. And there we go. That's our trip. So five. Yeah, I can tell you 40 minutes took me an hour and 16. So honestly, I mean, we could have done it a lot faster, less efficiently, but you know, I think we did a good job. We did it at the speed limit. We were safe, I think reasonable, 24 miles exactly the same um so that's good uh, my watch dual band gps pretty accurate this car's odometer i imagine also very accurate so very good and this is the important figure 174 watt hours a mile so let's do some math and figure out what that was for my bike okay ryan we just did math pretty interesting results i'm thinking absolutely really interesting so we can see here our average efficiency, 174 watt hours per mile. That's also 5.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is really great. And we can see the total energy is four kilowatt hours. If we accept that, uh, that number of 24 miles, we can just multiply our watt hours per mile to miles to get a, a more accurate number. And that was this. So 4,176 watt hours of total usage on this trip. Yep, total usage for right that same distance on my bike. So what was our average speed? Does it say that actually? It does not tell us the average okay. speed. I would just guess probably around 35, somewhere miles an hour. On my bike, it was 19, uh, just under 20. So slower, obviously, but did the same distance in uh, instead of uh, what it was it, 40 minutes when we stopped. It's still counting, actually. Yeah, so it was 40 minutes when we stopped. I did an hour and 16. And my energy consumption did the math. I averaged 156 watts, according to Strava. Rough calculations, but it's it's got all of the exact incremental speed info and my real-time heart rate, so it's doing from a ECG chest strap. So best we could do without $700 watt measuring pedals one day. But um, doing that calculation, 156 watts times the hours, it was 1.27 hours basically right. um, of time. Uh, we're getting an you know average of uh, what was that? 200 watt hours. 198. Round, yeah. 198. Let's round up and be generous. 200 watt hours versus. 4,200 watt hours almost, so 20 times more. And again, this is this is just highlighting a difference. We talk about efficiency with electric cars and they are extremely efficient for vehicles of this size. When we're talking about personal mil mobility, micro mobility, I think that there's a lot more efficient options. Yeah, so not making this video to say you should feel bad for driving a car or you should try to buy, I mean, do try to bike a meet, but basically when you bike places, opportunities open up. If you really do care about, you know, being having a low environmental impact, if that's one of the reasons you choose to drive EVs, then, you know, EVs are good, but they're not the best solution. Uh, and of course, weather and all these other things, you know, make up a factor. But I am interested with technology, with e-bikes, what you mentioned, how efficient some of those could be. I think there could be some really interesting, honestly, um, options for hopefully a lot of people. The U.S., one of our weaknesses is we have terrible bike infrastructure. And you and I are both blessed to live in Boulder, Colorado, where it's pretty great. Um, um, not everyone does, so we recognize that. But nonetheless, if you like this video, if you want to see a little more coverage of micro mobility, maybe we can do some stuff on out of spec scoots again or tie it into our guide coverage. This channel will always remain, you know, priority of cars and electric vehicles. Uh, but nonetheless, I thought this was a super interesting comparison. I'm excited to hear what everyone else has to think about it. Yeah, well, thanks so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.